Automate CNC. Hi. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to set up an automatic tool height setter inside the Automate VMC 425. So first, to remove the bolts off of the panel, you're going to need an Allen wrench. Now you're going to take your Allen wrench because you're going to need it to remove the panels inside. In here, you'll notice that there's two over here, and then there's two over here. Once you have those four removed, you're also going to need to go to the back of the machine to remove two from out of the back. These two are going to be right here. Now that we've got all six screws removed, we can remove the top panel. We need to remove one more panel at the very top of the machine. There's going to be four screws right there. I've got them hand tight again, so you're just going to pop these off. And once you've done that, you can lift this panel, and that'll make it to where it's accessible for you to go all the way from the back of the machine all the way to the front. Now, we've already made sure to drill a hole in our machine so that we can lead our wires up there. Where you place the hole that you want to lead your wires through purely based on you. But you're gonna wanna favor the right side of the machine because that's where all of the wires lead to to go to the controller. Show you how to put the tool height setter inside of your machine. So right now with this one, I want it out of the way so I have as much table space as possible. So I'm gonna put it in the upper right hand corner. Okay, so I've got it on there. I've got exactly where I want it. Just tighten it down right here. You wanna get it as close to the edge of the table. That way you have a that way you have more room for machining part. So now, I want to put my screw in there. Line it up with my first one. Use my Allen wrench to get it nice and tight. And there you go. Now I've got my placement for my tool height setter. So now, I'm going to feed the wires through the top of the machine. Now if you notice right here, I've attached a small wire to extend our ground for when we get inside of the controller. So you'll see, I came out of the top of the machine right here to guide it and into this panel. Make sure to leave a decent amount of leeway so that your wire isn't too tight so that if the table moves, your wire doesn't get pulled in a, a drastic way. So now I want to feed my wire into this panel. Okay. There's my wire. Now if you notice these big gray wires, they're all going into the controller. So I kind of just let that be how I knew where to get to. We cut two small jumper wires. I made them about a foot long for the purpose of the demonstration so that there was plenty of leeway for me to pull them out of the machine and make sure nothing snagged and nothing was too tight. Now I'm ready to start hooking wires into my Molex connector in the bottom left corner. And if you notice, the mo on the Molex connector, everything is actually numbered. So it's, it's a lot simpler than you'd think. Okay, and I've got my flathead screwdriver. Okay, so in my first terminal, I'm going to put my blue and my red wires. Now I'm going to tighten it, my flathead screwdriver. Make sure they're nice and secure. Next, I'm going to put my black wire Port four. Tighten that up with my flathead screwdriver. Now, my green goes into port labeled 10. First, I need to hook up my jumper wires. So, so I'm gonna take my top Molex connector. I need to put one in the one port and one in the 10 port. 
Sometimes it'll be easier to just pull out all the wires and kind of put them together when you put it in there. And from my one, I'm going to go down to the one on my other Molex connector that was labeled X21 Fast IO. One to one, they're corresponding numbers, remember that. I wanna hook in my, I wanna hook my connectors back in. I'll hook in my top one because I know that that has wires already in it. So I wanna make sure that those wires are all right. I don't wanna hook in my bottom one first because I don't know if it'll pull this one. Make sure it's nice and secure. Okay, my wires are still secure. Now, I'm good to hook in my bottom one. Okay, make sure to pull your wires so that you have plenty of give. Okay, now it's nice and secure. All my wires are still in there. Now, I can move on to my ground. Which is gonna be this silver wire hanging off to the side. That's gonna be my ground. Now I've wrapped it up nice and tight with another wire so they can reach my ground lug. This is the lug. I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit. I always slightly bend the wire so that it will curve around whatever I'm using for a ground. So I gave it the almost like a little candy cane. Okay, so I'm just gonna go right under here, I'll hook it on there. Make sure my ground doesn't slip off. Make sure it stays on there. To finalize this, I'm gonna put a wire nut on my ground just to make sure it's absolutely secure. Okay. Now I should be ready to go.